Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our Pinoy Builders webinar event entitled Concrete and Mortar Finishing Solutions. We're happy to have all of you with us today for another round of insightful talk with the expert. I am your host, Engineer Icy Mignano, and today we are joined by Mr. Ronnie Traballo as he discusses the trends and innovations in terms of decorative concrete and Ryan Apollia as he talks about the value engineering marks. Everyone is placed in a box located at the dashboard to ask your question. The moderator will choose the top five questions and will discuss at the end of the presentation. There will be a poll activity after the Q&A session of the second speaker. Winners from our poll game will be announced on the Pinoy Builders Facebook page, so please make sure to follow us at Pinoy Builders 2019. Link is posted in our chat box. Please take note that this webinar is recorded and will be uplo uploaded later on at Pinoy Builders YouTube channel, so hit the bell button to subscribe. Link is posted in our chat box as well. And now, let us all welcome our first speaker. He is the Managing Director of Cypress Ball Today, he will be discussing about the current trends and recent innovations sa larangan ng decorative concrete. Mr. Ronnie Traballo, the floor is yours. Hello. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining. And... Uh, I hope this will be a really productive afternoon uh, to everyone. Okay, so let me just highlight my screen. Ayan, so can you see my screen? Ah? Is it okay? Is it on? Okay, so yeah, so a while ago I was introduced, but just to further uh, explain more about myself, no, uh, aside from uh, being the managing director of our family owned corporation, Bomanite and Cypress Bomanite. I'm also an active member of the Decorative Concrete Council in, uh, of uh, ASCC or American Society of Concrete Contractors. In fact, uh, I'm also a certified decorative concrete examiner. I, I took it uh, last January this year and uh, I'm fortunate to pass and be a certified examiner for decorative concrete. Yeah. So, and so para Mickey yung nagsasalita ngayon sa inyo habang nagpapaliwanag all about decorative concrete. No? So, these were the seminars I undertook uh, last September in Chicago, but I've been doing decorative concrete for more than 20 years. Yeah. Okay, so now uh, moving on to the agenda for the afternoon, I'll talk more about just a brief overview of the past of decorative concrete, uh, how it started, and what are the general trends that we have nowadays. And third, I will also focus on the various decorative concrete systems, no? Uh, especially that what, what is available here in the Philippines or, or in Asia. No? And the lastly, I'll focus on how are we now changing the decorative concrete landscape here in, the, in our country uh, as we try to educate people and educate the market on the benefits, the functionality, and the, the capabilities of decorative concrete. Okay. So before I continue, uh, as part of our panelists, I have Mr. John Dennis, uh, with me, uh, he is the general manager of Bomanite International, and together with me, he will be uh, answering uh, the questions. So feel free to ask questions. In I think there's a, a page there where you or a, a section there where you can write questions, and John will answer questions as we go along, uh, so we can maximize the time. And towards the end of the talk, uh, we will uh, choose uh, three to five questions that will be relevant for further discussion that John and I can continue to uh, expound, explain better. Okay, so, okay, bayan? Sige. Okay, so let us, let me proceed. Okay, so when you think of concrete kasi here, uh, it's generally used as a structural material no, for making bridges, making roads, structures for houses, no? Uh, but it's in terms of decorative, uh, like what you see in the picture, it's still a uh, very, uh, uh, on its infancy stage no usually a concrete floor is always coated it's always painted or it, it becomes a subsurface lab no so for this topic i will focus on concrete as a finishing material in itself and 
para makita natin how versatile concrete really is no how it can be how you can do a lot of things with concrete as a finished product in itself no and it's dec it's it's functional decorative and it's value for money no okay so but before that diba sabi natin it's always good to understand the past where it everything uh, how it started no uh, decorative concrete really started in the US uh, with Lean Schofield no uh, Lean Schofield uh, introduced the use of colors into concrete okay mixing pigments uh, into concrete to create colored concrete diba uh, but then Brad Bowman ex uh, leveled it up a bit or a lot no by using texture into the concrete no uh, so if you will see here a team black and white picture if you can see the my pointer ito yung original or first uh, pattern no not made out of rubber but steel no so this is him also uh, using various uh, steel uh, patterns to create texture no or to create designs into colored concrete no and hence the term stamped concrete no so he was the founder and he patented the use of uh, textured concrete okay uh, as early as 1955 Later on, it was uh, improvised or innovated uh, by John Nasvik uh, using the rubber urethane stamp that we actually use nowadays. No, so it's a lot lighter, more flexible, and easier to, to hand handle. No, and uh, the fourth person uh, very relevant to decorative concrete field will be Bill Stegmaier. No, these are all Americans. So he introduced naman yung mga cool deck solutions, basically a uh, sprayable overlays no uh, wherein in stamp concrete or other decorative concrete are thick overlays na usually a uh, minimum of 5 cm or 2 inches si Bill Stegmaier naman introduced the concept of polymer modified concrete no and he applied uh, this uh, polymer modified concrete into pool decks creating stencils even applying it uh, over uh, uh, metal over uh, fiber cement boards no okay uh, later on, Decorative Concrete was Council was born. No, it is the only professional organization dedicated to the decorative concrete industry. It, it has been around since the early '90s, and uh, my company, uh, Boma Night Southeast Asia, became a member uh, around five years ago. Okay, so as I further uh, expanded the, uh, the decorative concrete uh, knowledge, my own decorative concrete knowledge. No, but my company, Boma Night. Um, has been a licensee or my company here in the in the Philippines is actually named Cypress Bomanite. So we're a full landscape construction provider and we became a licensee of Bomanite in 1991. So almost uh, 30 years na rin tayo in the Philippines. No? Okay, so, so with that, uh, a lot of innovation has gone into decorative concrete from stencils, textured rollers, nabanggit ko na yung spray textured patterns, even using acid stains, I will explain the use of acid stains, dyes, and even different sealers, no? And uh, garage floor opaque epoxies, yung mga metallic overlay. So, ang laki na ng innovations and decorative concrete. But still, uh, I think in the Philippines and Asia, we're still on the infancy stage. There's still a lot of room for growth, for education in the market. And siguro yun, yun ang sasabihin natin, kung matagal na pala yung decorative concrete in the U.S., Bakit dito sa Philippines or in Asia in general, parang nasa infancy stage pa lang siya. I'll expand, I'll explain about it as, as we go along in this talk, no? Okay? Baka lang mabilis ako, mabilis ba? Yan, sige. I'll, I'll try to uh, be a bit slower, no? So, so having explained the past of decorative concrete, uh, punta naman tayo a bit into the future, no? Uh, what are the trends, no? So, but before explaining the trends, how do you now identify a trend? No? Ito naman, uh, in the decorative concrete industry, trends come from creative installers. These are either installers uh, like me. I'm an installer. My company is an installer. And uh, we work with progressive architects that are really pushes the boundary of what decorative concrete can do. So we try to mix and match and try to innovate. No, Of course, other than the installers and architect, social media naman has always been an uh, important uh, Trends, ano, uh, important medium to create trends. No, uh, things become viral when it's posted on social media. Okay, so that's one of the sources of our trends. No, and of course, kapasama niyan is blog and of course testimonials from the entertainment industry, celebrities uh, showcasing, de ba? Kaya marami mga plantitos, plantitas ngayon because of all the posts sa Instagram ng mga celebrities. No. And all of those things, no. So those are the sources of trends. And other than that, of course, is recognition, no. Uh, I'll highlight a bit, no. Uh, like uh, recently, like 
even during the pandemic, we were recognized as uh, in our work in one of the projects here in the Philippines, uh, when we got uh, an award uh, for uh, Bayshore project, uh, Mega World Development. This is a, an actual pool project. We did the pool finish and even the pool deck was done with sand wash by another contractor. So to create that uh, parang Boracay look, no? uh, hindi siya gawa sa Dolomite, okay? It's made out of Bomanite. So maganda rito, hindi yan mawawash out, okay? Nakadikit yan, okay? At permanent, okay? So Bomanite, hindi Dolomite. Okay, so this was our award, no? So as, and as you see, we want to create those trends and we want to innovate. Lahat naman tayo dito with your project, either you are an installer here as a listener, as a homeowner, or as an architect, you want to see what are the latest trends, no? And I'll be explaining more about it as in, in my next slides, no? Okay, so I, as, as I explain the details, I'll focus on these six systems that we have right here. Uh, but due to time constraints, I'll focus maybe on three to four, you know, focusing on stamp concrete, exposed aggregate, and polishing, okay? And if we have time, I'll focus on the other systems on vertical imprint, GFRC concrete, uh, and patina stain, or uh, liquid coloration systems of decorative concrete. Yan. Okay, so hopefully, uh, gising kayo? Ako, nagkakape para gising. Okay, stamp concrete. Yan, man, nandito na yan since the 1991. It's really a uh, cast on site. Uh, we just really want to simulate the look of natural stones, bricks. Dito, project sa Cebu. Uh, sa mga Cebu to, no? Uh, it's a very common uh, product nowadays, but how do we do it differently? No, kahit nandiyan na yan dito, we've, we've, uh, you see a lot of stamp concrete in a lot of uh, uh, local government projects. But the way we do it, no, especially on our end, it's different because a lot of science into it. It's not just a matter of just putting color okay, and putting the pattern. No? So I'll explain a bit more about it. And maybe in the future, I'll, I'll send you more information. No? Okay, ito yung general sequence. No? Uh, of stamp concrete or any decorative concrete in general is making sure you have a good surface, stable, di ba? Kahit magano kaganda yung surface mo sa ibabaw, if you have a poor surface, then everything else will fail, no? And second, proper concrete, no? Concrete mix design, okay? So be it decorative, structural, okay? The foundation is a proper concrete mix design, okay? And then we put the color, we put the secondary color, then we create the stamp. So if you notice the picture on the lower end, then we clean it, then seal it, diba? Parang andali, okay? But uh, syempre madali, 30 minutes to. I, doing it is another thing, no? But just to give you an idea of how we go about in doing decorative concrete or stamp concrete in this uh, slide, no? Okay, so these are the some of the finished project and I'll explain to you the benefits, functionality of stamp concrete as we move along, no? So this one is an actual project finished uh, two years ago in San Juan City, the Pinaglabanan Shrine. So we tried to simulate the old Spanish look okay, of, of the San Juan Shrine. No? Uh, so we created a Roman cobblestone, a Roman cobblestone pattern in dark gray color hardener. Okay, so it can withstand even heavy traffic. No? And if you notice dito, meron tayong, always meron tayong protective sealer. That helps protect our concrete as it becomes the sacrificial coat. Ito naman, City of Dreams, yung mga nag nagkakasino dito. No? Siguro baka nasa loob kayo, pag lumabas kayo, may kita nyo dito yung Ashler Slate pattern naman. Uh, it's clean look, clean lines. Uh, it's more modern no? rather than the Roman cobblestone pattern. So it's very functional. Uh, in fact, with Bomanite, we have uh, more than uh, 50 standard patterns, but we can even customize patterns. No? Ito, no? A, a lot of patterns. This was a uh, uh, Sunburst Park in Iloilo City. Uh, easily for this uh, project, uh, eight, uh, one, two, five patterns kagad from uh, colors pa lang. We use four colors and five different patterns no, to create this sunburst park. No? So very eye-catching. No? Kailangan lang nasa taas kayo para ma-visualize yung ganitong sunburst pattern. Another prominent uh, landmark in Cebu, di ba? Kita nyo on the left side would be the Mactan Shrine. Okay, uh, if you will notice, na banggit ko kagina is customizing pattern. We can even customize colors. No, uh, our plant is proudly our materials pala is proudly Philippine made, and we export it all across Southeast Asia, even as far as the Middle East. No, so we can customize color. Look at the color on the left side. Uh, I follow the the color uh, pattern of the Cebu City. 
uh, using this uh, patchwork or parang ano yan, uh, parang uh, parang fiesta fe, ano, fiesta atmosphere no so we can customize colors not just patterns yeah so again it it can also be used for pool decks so it's very versatile commercial residential uh, pool decks all of that can be used using stamp concrete no yeah so so other than stamp concrete for pool deck mas ginagamit yung exposed aggregate no uh, like this project that i showed you a while ago this the bayshore uh, pool finish and pool deck finish no uh, kasi uh, we try to uh, we remove the top layer yung cream ng concrete natin using a proprietary uh, uh, surface deactivator so to allow the the natural uh, aggregates to show no uh, sa atin ano i think you are we are more familiar with pebble washout Okay, yeah, we have a lot of pebbles, but rather than pebbles, uh, uh, we also use the colored in the concrete and also the sand to create the texture. No? So parang, if you haven't seen this, it's like sandpaper. So similar to sandpaper, we can use different sizes of aggregates from fine, very fine, up to coarse aggregates. Okay, so, uh, and we can also uh, use other than pebbles, we can also use different pigments, even glass. And later on, I will show you one of the newer trends. No, uh, what other materials we can expose? Okay. Yeah. And similar to stamp concrete, it starts with good surface preparation and concrete pouring. Then after finishing it, we can uh, expose. Uh, we can color the sand wash using color hardener or integral color. No? In color hardener, siguro as a trivia, it might uh, be discussed later on. I think may 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 question and answer later. Uh, yung color hardener is broadcast on top. No? It's the primary coloration system being used to do stamp concrete. So it's just broadcast on top of the concrete. While integral color, on the other hand, is mixed into the whole blend. So if you have a ready mixed truck, yung buong color, ilalagay natin sa loob ng truck. Okay? So, and you have the full depth of the slab is colored concrete. No? So that's integral color. While yung binobroadcast lang sa ibabaw is color hardener. Yeah, and so the, those two options can be used to do uh, first uh, sand wash. Okay, then we apply the sinabi ko kanina the activator. This is meant to uh, to remove uh, help uh, retard the surface. Para pag milinis natin using uh, uh, this uh, tawag dito, um, uh, cleaning equipment, tawag dito, uh, then you can expose the surface burnisher or uh, uh, floor. Floor polisher, and then you can remove the surface and then apply. Of course, always finish it with a sealer. Okay, some of the existing projects uh, will be this one. No? This was a project done in Okada, okay, uh, in their indoor pool. Okay, so again, the function is a lot, it's a lot, a lot of the sand wash is used in uh, in pool decks because it has that profile na non slippery. Okay, this this one, uh, the Bayshore project also used in the lounge seats, no, or lounge beds, no. Okay, uh, this is this is a project in by Double Dragon in Meridian Park, uh, now used in the planter boxes. Okay, and dito maganda dito combination of stamp concrete and then exposing portion of the stamp concrete to create that texture. So if you will notice the pointer, etong buong slab na to is stamp concrete, but uh, every other square. We have this pattern that we expose. Now we have this technique that in exposed natin, you still have the texture of the stamp concrete, but we expose it, and you will notice the salt and pepper look. No, to the para siyang granite, ba? So ganyan ka versatile yung decorative concrete. No, o ato yung mas traditional na alam na natin. No, ito yung pebble wash. No, we have a lot of pebbles in our islands that we can use. No, uh, and then mas maganda rito if we can fuse it with color, uh, integral color para mas litaw na litaw yung difference between the various colors of our pebbles okay this was an integral color bigger aggregates uh, a project in uh, Mactan Newtown okay so this this one naman pare parehong regular gray uh, gravel but the one that differentiated was the color the use of the integral color so there's a gray integral color and the brown integral color okay so one of the trend is using this no kasi mas cleaner look no if one sabi ko kanina uh, rather than use a lot of natural patterns as stamp concrete in the US and even now in the Philippines, there's a shift to use more of sand wash. Aside from the skid resistance factor, uh, it's because of the clean lines, no? very flat, very modern, 
Uh, so it complements well doon sa mga modern buildings natin like this one. Okay? So I mentioned a while ago para siyang sandpaper, iba-iba rin yung exposure level. It could be a light exposure, medium exposure, and if you have those bigger aggregates to show or even some decorative elements like this one uh, shell, then you use a heavy exposure. No? Okay. Again, uh, I, I'm just explaining the trends. No? Yung actual technical applications, uh, specs, I, I'll discuss how you can learn more about it as we move along as, uh, towards the end. No? Okay, ito binanggit ko kangina, one of the newest trends no? uh, is the use of glow-in-the-dark aggregates. Yan. So during nighttime, uh, these are naturally charged using sunlight. And uh, the actual uh, glow can last from six to even eight hours. No, uh, we have a good source of natural sunlight, except now na medyo med bagyo tayo. But otherwise, if we have a good proper sunlight in the nighttime, you can see this. No, and uh, we're working on a few projects here that we will utilize glow in the dark aggregate. So, baka may mga architect dito that you would like to be one of the first and trendsetter, then contact me mamaya. Okay, so. Other than that, of course, another trend that has been, I think, in the Philippines for around 10 years no, is polished concrete. No? It's really just using a grinding machine, a, a two system, using a diamond grinding machines, polishing machines, and a densifier, a silicate-based solution to help densify the surface. No? So ito yung step by step. I won't go into the detail, but it's basically uh, grinding an existing surface. It could be an old concrete surface or a new concrete, properly cured, we'll grind it using the right sequence of diamonds, and then we will treat it as a step, step number three. After you have, we have reached the certain level of flatness and exposure of the aggregates, then we treat it with a densifier. Okay, uh, And then afterwards, we continue to move along and polish it to give it either a matte shine or a super gloss shine. No? And so at the end, so we use this polishing machine. These are not small machine these are expensive machines no as some of the machines here are half a million or even uh, up to a million pesos no okay some of the project uh, that we did here an overlay polishing in uh, city of dreams okay paranaque city uh, showroom in the us these are colored with dyes no uh, not not color hardener not integral color but uh, the secondary colors are colored with dyes and I, i'll explain more about it later this one is colored with chemical stain the, the project in uh, Taguig, in Kidzania. Of course, you can also color polished concrete with the actual color of the aggregates, no? using the, our different pebbles. Grind it enough to expose the pebbles and then grind it further to, to show really the colors of the pebbles. Yan. Ito, using integral colors to color the, the surface. So, and daming ways. No? You can use all the various coloration system available in decorative concrete and apply that into the polished concrete. Yan. So ito yung sinasabi ko kanina, yung patina stain naman, uh, if we have the color hardener and the integral color uh, that we apply on fresh concrete, yung patina stain naman is a liquid coloration system. So we have chemical stain, we have topical stains, we have concrete dyes, all the various liquid colors that we can infuse and uh, apply sa concrete okay, to look you know, to make it decorative like this. No? So these are just basically flat floor slab, then stained, and then cut to create this diba? very decorative, beautiful look. No? Yeah. So uh, some, some steps from preparation, layout, this one, uh, making sure you have a good surface and then applying the stains. Maraming stains, though. I won't go into the details. This one is a very orna organic color, no? medyo parang... Uh, over the top, no. But this was a training that I was just doing, just to highlight the the various colors that we that's available, no. And then at the finish, we can always we can always seal it, no. Uh, uh, always apply sealer, no. Uh, similar with stamp concrete, sand wash, and all the decorative concrete options, it's always important to apply a good quality sealer, okay. Yeah. So some samples of, of the finish. Uh, projects okay this is a hotel that we did in Cagayan City in Tuguegarao okay uh, not even polished no uh, light polish pala light polish then stained okay we can also stain stamp concrete no so this was uh, also the same project in uh, 
this is also a project that we did in Tugegarao, and then we stain stamp concrete. Okay. So again, using stain in uh, in various application. Okay. Yeah. And so, okay. So I'll just highlight for the next three examples uh, or three systems. I'll just uh, highlight its functionality without going a lot into the details. But basically, uh, other than putting stamp horizontally or on floors, we can also do vertical imprint, okay? It could be hand carved like this, or we can apply patterns like this, okay? So basically the, the, the difference lies on the, the actual uh, vertical mix that we use, no? Uh, unlike traditional concrete, when you plaster it on the wall or on a vertical surface, up to a certain level, nagka-crumble siya, nagsasag, di ba? But this one, our vertical imprint, up to two inches or five cm, you can plaster it and carve it without carving. And you have enough, uh, I think, working time of around 20, 30 minutes before the concrete steps. And so, yan yung mga samples of, uh, these are some of the samples of the vertical imprint. Okay. Projects, uh, project we did in, uh, in Manila. Okay. Uh, then, uh, fiberglass reinforced concrete or GFRC. This one naman, uh, can be done uh, prefabricated. This is a project in Rockwell. Uh, we we cladded the existing uh, a pool uh, pool deck or uh, pool terrace and then cladded it with the uh, GFRC Rockworks, okay, to make it uh, yeah, more look to look it make, to make it look natural, no? Okay, so it's lightweight because. Uh, uh, in some cases, we it's just hollow inside. No? So mga theme park, this is uh, commonly used for theme parks. We can do it like this one, a uh, uh, temporary or a movable uh, waterfalls or water feature structure that we use in one of our exhibits. Or like even this, mga precast, precast boulders. No? So actually, there's another picture, me carrying that actual uh, stone. No? These are actually like one meter, almost a meter diameter of uh, stones when it was finished, but it's like less than 10 kilos, no? Okay, so if you'll notice some of the scraps here, these are actually uh, made out of styrofoam material, no? Yeah. So this is in our showroom. Uh, we also use styrofoam as the base material and then uh, plastered it with vertical mix and GFRC to create this custom rock structures. Yeah. Okay, so I'm medyo mabilis tayo, no? Uh, because a lot of topics to, to cover. But uh, basically, if you will notice, a lot of these things are done on site. Okay, so that's why uh, what I have been doing, uh, me personally, I've been doing a lot of trainings. Uh, in fact, last year, prior to the pandemic, I think I did around uh, 8 to 10 trainings for the whole year, no? I, I travel all across Southeast Asia. Last year, this is a training I did in uh, Vietnam. I think I did two trainings in Vietnam last year. Uh, as far as Middle East, I also did Qatar, I think, two years ago. Uh, I did two trainings there uh, with a lot of Filipino crew. Okay, so I did polishing training, stamp overlays, and a vertical together with uh, one of my mentors, Chris Sullivan, in Vietnam. Okay, and even here in the Philippines, no, uh, this is a training I, I did uh, last year also, trainings in uh, Iloilo, Cebu, uh, Agusan, and also in our office here in Subic and uh, Bulacan. So I do a lot of training. So because uh, ito yung sabi ko palagi, with decorative concrete, the, yung, yung greatest secret talaga ng decorative concrete is the quality of installers. It's always the one holding the trowel. No? So sabi ko sa one of my uh, discussion before, it's like making coffee. No? Yan, parang uh, coffee ng Starbucks, di ba? It's the one making the coffee that makes the difference. Otherwise, you can have a very good coffee bean, good coffee equipment, but pag mali yung timpla ng barista, eh, wala din. No? So that's why uh, for me, uh, the greatest uh, secret in high quality installation is really educate the market and train the installers. And that's what I've been doing, no? doing a lot of training sa mga installers natin, tsaka sa mga interested contractors, engineers, and even architects. No? Okay, and however, alam naman natin na may pandemic, no? so very limited and travel natin. So what, I, what have I done over the last two months? Medyo kahit hindi ako ma social media, I've also started joining the bandwagon of uh, deck of social media by doing my own blogs. No? 
So I think this almost three months now, <clears throat> we have a decorative concrete Asia page. No, uh, this one is in Facebook. If you type decorative concrete Asia, uh, if you see this page, uh, if you and you want to learn more, again, uh, the last 30 minutes is very compact overview of decorative concrete. If you want to learn more about decorative concrete, add nyo lang, uh, especially next week, ah, hindi, December 5 pala, we will have our uh, first Facebook Live. Since 300 na, uh, yan, meron kaming early Christmas uh, party. Yan. So kung makasali kayo, meron tayong raffles prizes and yung, yan, si Mr. John Dennis will be my guest uh, speaker uh, for the event. Okay? Uh, yan. So please come and I invite all the attendees here to join this, this FB Live event this coming December 5. So try to join as early as now no? if you're not yet a member. So other than the, the decorative concrete community group na mas technical kasi it's really meant for the installers and architect, ito naman general information lang. I also have a blog page na decorative concrete. Uh, sorry, type nyo lang the beauty of concrete uh, both in Facebook and YouTube. No? Yan. So yan, may mga iba-iba. So mas, mas detailed explanation of the different and ano naman yung mga above average at saka yung mga mediocre decorative concrete. Kasi kahit naman saan ano, meron kang iba't ibang level of work, ba? So we want to ensure na yung decorative concrete is always top-notch ang performance. So I'll try to educate the market through my blog, no? Both in Facebook and YouTube, yan. YouTube, yan. Kakasimula pa lang one month. As of yesterday, ata 80. So sama na kayo. Yan. So, yan. And hopefully, uh, again, uh, this 30 minutes you were able to understand the, the, the functionality, the, decor the, the versatility of decorative concrete. And later on, I hope you're able to ask a few questions that I can answer as we go along. Okay? Thank you. I pass, I'll pass the you know, to IC again. Okay, I'll stop sharing. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Ronnie. I personally learned a lot from this discussion. Imagine the potential of decorative concrete, no? Pwede siyang... Um, Macolored, even though it is still fresh or during curing and all that. So, ang laki talaga ng potential, yes. potential niya. So, very nice na narinig ko ito. And thank you for your discussion. Um, let's move on to the next part, which is the Q&A portion with um, Mr. Ronnie. And we would also like to ask the help from Mr. John Dennis, the General Manager of Bomanite International Limited. Okay. So, I'm, I'm sure yeah. maybe John was able to uh, read some of the questions in the chat because I was focused on the presentation, so I wasn't able to. Were there any questions here? Uh, yeah, Actually, hi. There... Yeah, John. Yeah. Yeah, go yeah. ahead. Yeah, hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Well, we had a few questions. Um, I'm just actually still answering one at this very second. However, um, a couple of the questions have come up with the same topic, which is basically, number one, how do we avoid cracks in the concrete and how do we repair cracks in decorative concrete when it does happen? And I think that's something that really needs to be discussed here because, and I'm sure it'll actually be relative to what Holson was going to present after this. One of the most important things about controlling cracks is controlling the products, first of all, i.e. the concrete mix in this case, the water content, taking care of the curing process, and also the amount of rebar or reinforcing mesh. So as to where to place it within this lab, what's the centers going to be, et cetera, et cetera. But the one thing that tends to create a lot of cracking in concrete in the Philippines that I've noticed is the general lack of water curing in the concrete that's placed. Quite a lot of people place the concrete, throw a piece of plastic on top and go away and come back one week, one week later. And all of a sudden they seem very shocked why we have cracks. The concrete mixes are carefully designed with the right amount of water in there to create the optimum hydration of the cement. So if a lot of that water is lost to evaporation through the wind blowing or perhaps through the heat of the day, and there's not sufficient water to generate the hydration process of the cement, then the strength of the concrete is reduced and therefore it's more susceptible to cracking as well. Um, as for repairing the cracks, 
we have several techniques for repairing cracks. Um, but there's a saying, and it's quite a it's quite a blasé statement. Sometimes the best repair is to do nothing at all. Because when you try to repair a crack that's in a decorative concrete slab, you can often make it worse and make it more visually disgusting for the customer. So you have creative artistic kind of guys who can draw leaves and make a crack appear like a leaf within the design. But sometimes you just have to say, don't touch it. On other occasions, we have to cut it out, fill it with resin or, or fill it with a colored product. It really depends There's many ways that we can use to, to repair the cracks. Um, <clears throat> the other thing we were asked was, can these type of products be trafficked by vehicles? Yes, most definitely we can traffic these systems. Uh, again, if we have foot traffic, if we have foot traffic, then it's just a standard installation with a mesh. If we have vehicle traffic, cars, etc., then we have to have a standard wire reinforcing grid. However, if we have heavy loads, then we'll look at using rebars and increasing the, the strength of the concrete, etc., to overcome the loads that's expected. So, yes, the answer simply is we can traffic these systems by vehicles. Um, some of the other questions, just let me scroll through regarding the coloring. Uh, somebody asked a question regarding what type of colors do we, how do we get the color into the concrete? So essentially we use primarily organic pigments and Bominite has 60 standard, six zero standard colors available in our portfolio. And as you heard Ronnie mentioned, we can also create, um, one off or special colors for your particular project and some of the colors we get are just you wouldn't normally expect to find them on concrete you might rather find them in a paint shop and one of those tinting machines that's the width of the color palette that we can provide to you as basically we have a saying that the only limitation is your imagination and that's the same with the colors was there any other questions that anybody might like like to ask now? There's a few other questions here, John. You want me okay. to answer? So yes, please. These are like uh, highlight two other uh, questions here. Uh, first, of course, very good question on safety. You no, know? uh, toxicity of colored concrete. I mean, of course, uh, in any construction requirement is all safety. So uh, concrete is dusty in general, together with all the other uh, chemicals that we use. So we always, I suggest, we have the proper uh, dust mask. Okay, uh, for, for powders and the, the right mask, uh, if we are now dealing with the uh, uh, sealers, no? so always protect, okay? Uh, we use grinders, we use uh, all sorts of the different equipment that uh, might pose risk. So always uh, let's do our job safely uh, with the right uh, PPEs and then the right mask, no? not just for the virus, but again, for all the chemical hazards available. No? Okay, and then uh, another question here. No, it's we're a local company. Uh, yes, we we again we manufacture the products here in the Philippines, and we have applicators all over the country. No, uh, Iloilo, we have a market. Uh, we have an applicator in the Philippines. That's why you saw Sunburst Park and a few other park. No, even Bacolod. So we have applicators in the in uh, Mindanao, in North Mindanao, Cebu. So we we do our own, like my company with Bomanite and sister company QC Construction Products. So these are all available uh, through our applicators. And again, yung, yung the important lang dito is always make sure you work with the professionals. No, uh, Other my, than my own company, we have a network of dealers. I have a sister company uh, that does uh, sell the materials only. No? Kasi may mga nagtatanong, I don't want it to be installed by Bomanite, but I just want to sell it or buy the material and we can sell the materials but we just want to ensure that you're working no uh, with the right installers no so marami kasi diyan ah yung nakapanood lang sa youtube eh, expert na no ba so mga youtube expert natin so we, let, let's try to ano and i'm happy naman to uh, recommend the right installers that can really help you with your projects no okay and another question dito uh, yung mga mga repairs no and a lot of the issue on the repair is really more of not just the decorative aspect, like what John mentioned. Uh, it's really part of the general good concrete practice that I think the Pinoy uh, builders and 
Paul Sim is trying to educate the market. That's why I appreciate Paul Sim for inviting me here to also talk about it because uh, it's an all-purpose material, whole, uh, cement, but it's a, a, a lot of times abused, di ba? So not just the decorative aspect, yung basic lang from surface preparation, water curing, spacing of joints, all of those things makes a difference. Kaya lang, usually sa decorative concrete, tayo yung last eh. Kaya tayo yung palaging napapagbintangan pag may problema na. Yun. Siguro yun, I think those three answers already answered some of the other question here. But I will also try to answer uh, individually as we try to go along. No? Okay na ba, Ice? Any or John? Final, I'm, I'm almost done. I think I've consumed my yeah, time. Yeah, thank you, um, Ronnie and John. Um, actually, we weren't able to answer all queries, but we will try to answer them via email later on. Or um, while the, the webinar is ongoing. So anyway, we will close the Q&A session for now as we will be announcing our early bird winners. For our early bird winners, congratulations! Abraham Alimbuyao and Howell Carciliar. Dahil maaga kayo, you both won a free special prize from Holsim and Cy Cypress Bomanite. We'll send you an email for the details. So congratulations! And now, moving on to our next speaker. He is the sales manager of Dry Mix at Holsim Philippines. He's been with the company for more than 12 years. He is responsible for the overall commercial strategy and performance of the Drymix business covering retail and project sales nationwide. Today, he will be sharing with us how value engineering can be achieved through Drymix mortars. And to tell us more, let us all welcome Engineer Ryan Apalia. Engineer Ryan. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Go ahead. Yeah, Hello, good afternoon, Philippines. And isang mapagpalad na hapon po sa inyong lahat. So ako po si Ryan J. Afalia from Holcim. Uh, I will be discussing the, the dry mix mortars for the finishing solutions on our projects or sa mga bahay natin. So let's start on the multifix, which is the all-in-one mortar na product ni Holcim. This is a new product of Holcim that, uh, that is uh, very flexible. So I'll explain it later uh, why is it uh, flexible and practical. Practicability, no? Itong product mo to. Basically, on, on the construction site, or especially in masonry, uh, mortar is the common element in masonry. No? Ano nga ba itong mortar na to? Mortar is a mixture of sand, cement, and water. No? You have to mix it to, 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 to make a thick paste and to, to use to bind two surfaces with each other. No? And... Usually, um, manual production of mortars are, are low-tech. Low-tech because um, uh, it was mixed or it is usually mixed by, by manually. And before you mix it or to produce a mortar, you have to sand screening first and then mix it with cement and, with, and then the map and with water, no? Um, another thing is that the design mix or the right proportioning of mixture is based on the visual only. So that's why I, I'm saying to this, uh, the, the manual production of mortar is a uh, low tech, you know, because it depends on the properties and materials and practice na ginagawa natin. Sand is the major constituent of a mortar mix and its quality greatly affects of the performance of the mortar. Where in some regions or areas, sourcing of good quality sand to produce a mortar mix that meets its desired properties is a big challenge. You know? um, having said this, 
uh, this may result to common wall problems. So number one, ating mga common problems na na-experience natin while uh, after aging or um, drying ng mortar mix natin is number one is yung dusting. Ano nga ba tong dusting na to? Ito yung nagpa-powder, no? Pagka inano mo yung wall mo, tinatch mo siya, ito yung nagkakaroon ng, nagpo-form ng powder or chalk sa, sa surface ng plaster natin. Ano ba causes nito? Mainly because of um, excess amounts of clay or silt na meron sa buhangin na ginamit natin. No? Number two, the causes of this uh, dusting is the addition of extra water in the mortar mix. So, yun yung mga causes ng dusting natin. Next is the poor adhesion or the banding or which is commonly called as in project site yung tinatawag natin na gapa. Uh, bakit ba nagkakaroon ng ganito ng debanding or poor adhesion? Uh, this is because of uh, number one is the very thick thick layer ng plaster natin no? yung ginagawa natin. And also may mga dust or oil na present sa substrate natin prior of um, uh, doing or applying a plastering natin. Next is the crazing. Very common tong problem na to sa walls natin, crazing na para mga spider. No? So it's a network of closely spaced fine cracks. And ano bang causes nito? Uh, number one is the cement phase finish no yung ginagawa natin na after or yung mga skilled worker natin no after nila maglibukada nag uh, binabara nila minsan naghahabol ng oras so ang ginagawa nila ay nagpupuro pinupuruan nila yung powder ng cement no kumukuha sila ng cement powder and then um ilalagay nila sa uh, wet mortar natin na naiplaster natin so yan yung main cause ng tracing natin yung pagpupuro Next is the map cracking. Itong map cracking na to is very similar to to crazing, no? Except that um, map cracking usually through and through yung crack nito. So medyo malalim, no? Umaabot siya hanggang sa substrate natin. What are the causes of this problem? Number one is the high cement content. And Number two is yung very thick layer ng plaster natin. So, sobrang kapal ng pagpa-plastering natin dito. Next is the weak plaster. Ano nga ba tong weak plaster nito? Ito yung easy, ito yung napakabilis or easily scrape, scrape off after hardening. No? Uh, sometimes uh, it can be chipped away with a hard sharp object either screwdriver or minsan susi lang. Pagka kinaskas natin yung uh, wall na yan, mabilis siyang na, na scrape off. So, yan yung mga yan yung mga common common problems na na-encounter natin sa sa wall. So, this is not limited, no? Of course, because it also affects the workmanship ng skilled worker natin sa sa common problems ng wall uh, finishing natin. So going back, ang um, mortar is a is a mixture of sand, cement and water. And it is being produced usually at the job site by using a one bagger mixer or manually mix, no? Yung pinapala-pala siya. And prior of mixing that or producing a mortar, uh, you have to sunscreen first. No? And sometimes, or roughly estimate, the, the, the purchased sand, no? yung na-purchase natin sand, yung sunscreen siya, almost 60% lang ang nagagamit natin doon sa, sa na-purchase natin yung sand. So uh, then the rest is either itatapon natin or pwedeng gamitin siya sa gravita. No? And yun nga, sabi ko, um, it's a very low tech because yung proportioning is done through by the visual lang. 
So this is a traditional method that is being done, which I could say is a low-tech production. Now, with the advent of new technology, through the latest equipment and machineries of Holsing, Holsing will do it for you, for your convenience and easy to use. It is a premix of a dry mix mortar, and it's a high-tech and modern method of production of dry mix mortar natin. So ano nga ba tong dry mix mortar natin na all-in-one mortar? This is a Holsing Multifix, the all-in-one mortar. Uh, it's easy to use and prepare. Just add water. No? It's a high-performance polymer modified mortar formulated for internal and external wall for floor screed, um, even on tile application by the thick bed method. It is a one product that will sub substitute um, all site mix mortars, especially when sand quality and supply are an issue. It is easy to use also. You just need to add um, water. More simple than the traditional way of screening of sand, taking bags of cement, and mixing them together with water. So what are the benefits of this product? No? It provides outstanding adhesion performance, even after aging and weathering. Number two, you have an in high initial adhesiveness and non-sag properties, making it ideal for overhead applications, such as ceilings, or sometimes on a upper portion ng door jam natin or yung mga kanto mesa natin. No? One, one good thing of this product is that this can be applied either the use of machine spraying or the usual steel trowel, either on concrete or block works, such as um, um, the AAC block or the lightweight um, hollow blocks natin, the autoclave aerated blocks, or the usual uh, hollow blocks, CHB, na ginagamit natin, as well as yung mga, sa mga precast din natin, pwede rin siya nito. It's a factory mix. You can never go wrong. Why? Because you are assured that you have a consistent quality and performance and better application control. Also, or last but not least, it reduces finishes, uh, finishing time and lowers labor costs. This product is one of a kind due to its fle flexibility and practicability. So it's a value, it's a value for money. You, know? uh, you just have to add water. So Multifix is a flexible uh, product because you can use this as a base plastering for floor screed and for tiling by the thick bed method. Thick bed method. No? Take note of that. So Multifix comes in a 25 kilogram per bag of packaging no? and its color is gray and can be applied on a recommended thickness around 6 mm to 25 mm. And the total area that can cover per bag is around three square meter. So it is easy to use and convenient for you. You just have to add water. And actually the, the, the water demand ratio is one, one to six. I'll explain that later, which is etian. So for every one part ng water, equivalent siya into six parts powder. Uh, in reality, sa construction site or sa job site, wala naman tayong mga graduated uh, cylinder or bucket para ma matama yung uh, ang tawag dito, uh, water, water demand ratio natin. No? So si Holcim, ginawa lang ng science natin no? para hindi tayo maligaw sa proportioning ng, ng water cement ratio natin. So kung ano yung available na, na bottle or pangtakal natin sa site, for every one part nun ng tubig na yun, equivalent siya into six parts ng powder ng multifix. So you have to mix it around for about three to five minutes. And then the, the, the fat life or the mixture can be used within two to three hours. 
So even if um, naghalo si si Mason no during at inabutan siya ng break time. May natira pang halo. Pwede pa siyang gamitin no. Pagbalik niya usually ang tendency ng mga skilled worker natin ginagawa is na ito na matigas na makunat na. Ah uh, nagdadagdag tayo ng tubig. Using Holsim Multifix wala na tayong idadagdag pa. Yes, may kita natin siya matigas pa, but then again, we have to mix it well lang. And babalik siya sa sa properties niya nung 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 maihalo natin siya. And it can be used again para magamit natin siya. Okay? Next is the Holcim skin coat, no? Um for the finishing wall solutions natin. Um skin coat ang tagline namin dito sa Holcim Skin Coat namin is doubly kinis at tipid. Doubly kinis at tipid. It can explain it further may sa later on sa base sa presentation ko na. So, ang traditional way of finishing after plastering, magkakaroon pa ng actually minsan magkakaroon ng cement chipping no, especially on the on the columns or yung mga minsan may mga uh, buhos tayo na pade nagchi-chipping pa no? and then papasukan natin niya na mag-apply tayo ng patching compound or sometimes uh, kung mga puchu-puchu lang din na minsan na trabaho or walang alam si owner na ginagawa din ng mga pintor natin um yung calcium kuha sila ng calcium and then uh, ihahalo na siya directly sa sa paint natin and then apply na ng painting natin. So that's uh, basically the traditional way of uh, preparation the substrate up to painting natin. So this kind of method may result to various finishing problems. No? Um, Andi dyan na yung magkakaroon ka ng cracking and then sometimes uh, or mostly nangyayari nagkakaroon ka ng uh, nagpa-powder yung, yung wall mo. And worse, ang nangyayari, nagchi-chip off siya. Na later on, pag nag-apply ka ng paint, nag-painting ka, nakikita natin na kumakalas yung pintura. So, yun yung mga nagiging problem natin dyan. No? Sa traditional way of um, uh, painting natin or preparation prior of painting natin. So, that's that's where Holcim Skin Coat is born no? or was born. Ano nga ba tong Holcim Skin Coat natin? Um, it is a high performance uh, polymer modified mortar, especially formulated for thin plastering applications from 1 mm to 3 mm in thickness. It is used to achieve optimal surface smoothness by covering pinholes and correcting surface imperfections and unevenness of interior and exterior concrete walls and ceiling. Um, Holcim Scheme Coat typically ina-apply siya between plaster and paint. So what good with this, um, with our product, with Holcim Scheme Coat, is that you can apply this either on exterior walls or interior walls. And it comes in two colors, white and gray. And by the way, um, Holcim Skin Coat has a two variant pala. Um, isang super fine at isang uh, fine. So yung mas magaspang siya. Yung fine, ang application na, yung recommended thickness, umaabot siya up to 3 to 5 mm. So for the super fine, the recommended thickness is 1 to 3 mm per application. Having our product, no, uh, we usually test it through to our third-party contractor. And all of our product that we are producing, um, sinisend siya, di pinapadala siya sa Singapore. And ayun, tinitest siya. And good thing is that based on the lab result, it is five times tensile um, adhesion strength and can withstand up to 70, 70 degrees centigrade. So without the bias, comparing to the other brand na available in the market, 
we ship it to Singapore without without having putting the name no kung anong brand tong mga to and then ito ito yung lab result na na lumalabas sa 5 times tensile adhesion strength as compared to other brand and it adheres also to the uh, standard um tag dito, tag dito. standard ng uh, adhesion natin dito no sa test according to EN 1348. However, in Philippines, dito po sa atin, wala pa tayong standard na sinusunod in terms of uh, finishing yung materials natin. So, comparing, uh, using using the Holcim skin coat as compared to the traditional painting, you can eliminate at least three steps. So, right af uh, after after uh, after uh, uh, from CHB laying, then uh, uh, plastering, right after plastering, you can apply agad ng Holcim skin coat. Then after skin coat, then napapasok ang first coat mo and second coat. As compared to traditional painting, after mong mag-plastering dyan, gagamitan mo pa ng concrete neutralizer. And then magkakaroon ka pa ng primer magkakaroon ka pa ng concrete patty. And then another primer uli bago papasok pa lang ang first coat and second coat mo ng painting. Mm -hmm. So on a material per se, uh, malaki na naitipid natin, no? number one. Number two, as you can see, tipid ka na rin on the labor cost. And number three, mas mabilis mo siyang matatapos yung, yung trabaho natin or yung project natin. Here is the cost comparison first on the traditional um, painting preparation no uh, based on the cost comparison it's a 50% savings no kung gagamit tayo ng Holcim skin coat directly so considering on a 100 square meter uh, wall um ito yung naging cost comparison is a 50% savings so just like on a multifix, it is uh, easy and can convenient to use. Just add water. However, the exemption is mas malaki ang, ang water demand nito as compared to multifix. So for every one bag ng skin coat, um, ang water demand niya is around 6 to 7 uh, liters. Tulad ng sabi ko nga kanina, in reality, sa job site natin or sa construction site natin, uh, wala naman tayong mag-graduated cylinder. So for every for every one part, uh, for uh, for every one part ng battle or available na, ta na pantakal na meron tayo sa site, uh, tatlong parts ng powder ang, ang kakailanganin natin for us to mix and for us na hindi tayo mawala sa consistency ng skin coat natin. And the path life or mixture of um, skin coat can can be used or last up to three to four hours. So nga nang sabi ko kanina, uh, kung, kung inabutan ng break time sila pintor o si Mason na nag-mix, uh, okay lang yun. No? Pagbalik nila kami from the break time, kung makita man lang nila na medyo matigas na yung mixture natin, hindi nila kailangang dagdagan ng tubig. Hindi natin kailangang itamper, no? Or minsan ang nangyayari, itinatapo na lang. So it's a waste of money. But then again, using wholesome skin coat or wholesome product natin, wala tayong dadagdag. We have to mix it lang. And for every one bag ng wholesome skin coat natin, the area coverage of this is around 12 to 14 square meter. So yun. Next is the wholesome tile adhesive. The tagline of this product is doubly dikit power. Doubly dikit, unlike sa jowa mong sa una lang ang copy. Hindi, hindi ka iiwan nito. Dikit na dikit to pagka ginamit mo. So, uh, brief info, no? Uh, bakit ba nagkakaroon ng delamination ng tiles, no? Or nagpa-pop up yung mga tiles natin at a certain time, or, or sometimes, no? After installing it, no? Bakit nga ba nagkakaroon ng game or nagkakaroon ng kapak? ng mga tiles natin. 
this is mainly because of the thick bed method. Thick bed, ah, uh, please take note of that. Thick bed method na ginagawa or the, the, the traditional na kung paano tayo naging install ng tiles. So, ito yung using the ordinary mortar mix. No? So, ito yung main reason kung bakit nagkakaroon tayo ng gapa. So, ito, kaya lumabas din ngayon yung whole seam tile adhesive. No? And ano nga ba itong whole seam tile adhesive na ito? So, the whole, seam, uh, whole seam tile adhesive is a high polymer content which provides a stronger band to a wider range of tile and stones by the thin bed method. Manipis lang siya. No? It is infused with advanced chemical uh, additives which provides high sleep resistance and outstanding open time for efficient tile application. It is also easy to use, which, re which would reduce um, installation time and labor costs. And for the tile adhesive, it comes also to a two variant. Holcim has a two variant of um, tile adhesive. One is the premium plus, and the other one is the heavy duty. For the premium plus, ang um, limit lang neto, it can be used to a tile format up to 60 by 60 cm, either for floors or wall. Now, um, for, for, for other or for larger tile format, we recommend to use the heavy duty. And especially if the area is uh, heavy on foot traffic, we used to recommend the heavy duty. And if in case that you have a renovation na uh, time constraint na may existing tiles ka dyan, at in, and you hope not to, to chip it off, tanggalin pa, you can use the wholesome tile adhesive na heavy duty. Pwede siya sa tile on tile. So it is a uh, more efficient no since the tile adhesive should only be mixed with water for it to be ready to use it also has a better bonding strength as i've said as compared to the uh, sand cement mix so you can you 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 only use uh, a thinner layer thin thinner layer should be applied for it to be effective So, hindi na rin kailangan na ibabad pa yung tiles natin sa, sa tubing, no? na, which is usually yung mga ginagawa natin prior of uh, tiling or laying of tiles. Pagbukas ng, ng packaging yan, ibinababad pa sa, sa tubig. But using wholesome tile adhesive, hindi na kailangan pang uh, basain or pre-wet pre yung tiles natin. And... Lahat ng product nga namin, no? kinetest natin through third party. So, it it um, it complies to the standard of uh, EN, European 1347. So, and based on the lab result, it is uh, two times more sleep resistant as compared to other brand. So, wala pong bias yan. Lahat ng product papadala namin to Singapore without the name, putting at uh, A, B, C, D lang siya. And then, paglabas ng result, ito po siya. So, uh, it can save you at least 35% uh, more on tiling cost when you use a uh, whole sim tile adhesive, either premium plus or heavy duty. So, this uh, cost comparison lang naman. Comparing to the ordinary mortar natin ng pagta-tiles natin. It is easy and convenient to use. Just add water. Tulad ng skin coat natin, ang, ang isang bag naman nito ng, ng tile adhesive natin comes on a 25 kilogram. And it requires around 6 to 7 liters then per bag of water. But then again, uh, kung, kung wala nga tayo, wala tayong graduated cylinder or bucket sa site, kung ano available na takalan, for every one part ng tubig na available bottle sa site, 
three parts ng powder ang kakailangan namin. And then, you have to mix it lang din. Either using uh, mixing mixing machine. And then, it can be used also up to three to four hours, just like the Holcim Skin Co. And the area coverage of um, uh, tile adhesive per bag is around uh, five to seven square meter. So, having the right and better performing products. And of course, uh, right application mean less work or less rework for you, which translates to higher productivity and faster completion ng project natin. Which also leads to us to uh, more projects in a year and of course, more money for your business. No? And at the end, you build your reputation with the use of high quality product and right application. So that's all for today for my presentation and thank you. So if ever my question tayo, we can, we can entertain it. I see. Yeah, thank you so much Ryan for that very informative talk. Um, truly, no, parang mas convenient and mas efficient nga talaga ang gumamit ng dry mix mortars kesa sa yung traditional way of, of applying it. So, anyway, now we are opening the floor for our Q&A session with Ryan. The moderator for this session is the dry mix operations and product development manager of Holcim Philippines. Let us all welcome Mr. Ferdinand Asuncion. Sir Freddy, you are on mute. Oh. Okay, thank you. Right there. Ah, sure. Yes, <laughs> yeah. we can see you clearly. Okay, so dalawa lang yung ginagamit ko na ano kasi sira yung audio ng isa. Okay, so may meron na kung isang nakita ng question doon. Uh, Ang sinasabi niya is mayroon daw tayong dalawang klase ng skin coat. So parang ngayon lang niya nalaman based sa, sa presentation. Okay, so yeah, so tama yun. Uh, in terms of procurement, actually yung tanong na is in terms of procurement, uh, parang i-differentiate yung dalawa. Okay, so for yung first skin coat namin, yung fine skin coat, is ito yung ginagamit for correcting imperfections, uh, lang thickness ay 3 to 5 mm ang requirement. So pag ganun ka, kalaki yung kailangan nyo na i-repair, so ang gagamitin nyo is yung fine skin coat. Okay? Now for for uh, imperfections, uh, around 1 to 3 mm, ang ginagamit naman doon is yung super fine skin coat. Okay, so yun yung difference ng dalawa in terms of, of uh, thickness ng, ng repair, ng imperfections. Okay. Yung, yung, yung second question is, uh, ang sinasabi niya is yung mga paint companies is nagre-require ng, uh, ang tawag dito, warranty sa paggamit ng kanilang skin coat. Okay. Uh, Siguro kasama na rin yung warranty doon ng paint. Uh, I-check ko lang yung ano ah. Mabilis kasi yung mga pagpas yan. Some paint brands require you as use their own skin coat brands due to their chemical compatibility. This whole same skin coat has the same requirements on certain paints. Okay, yung, yung whole same skin coat, uh, regardless kung ito yung fine or super fine, uh, basta architectural paint or latex paint pwede. So, wala, wala dapat question ang uh, chemical compatibility. Okay, so ulitin ko, any latex paint, any architectural paint, pwede siyang ipatong sa uh, aming skin coat. Both uh, fine and super fine. And yung, yung isang question is about sa whole simple adhesive kung pwede daw ba siyang gamitin for vertical applications and kung ano yung compatibility niya sa uh, 
mga Mactan Stone. Okay, kung kung napapansin niyo doon sa presentation ni Ryan, yung tile adhesive namin, yung Premium Plus is classified as C1T. So kung napapansin niyo yung T sa dulo, ibig sabihin noon meron siyang excellent slip resistance. So ibig sabihin pag nilagay mo yung tiles doon, hindi siya bababa, hindi siya babagsak. So meaning to say both yung yung heavy duty namin at yung premium plus tile adhesive is pwedeng-pwede siya sa vertical applications. So depende na lang kung gaano kalaki yung mga tiles na gagamitin, doon lang magbabari kung uh, ano yung uh, uh, klase ng tile adhesive na gagamitin mo. For example, for tiles na less than uh, 30 by 30, so gagamitin mo diyan yung ano yung yung premium plus. Pero more than 30 by 30, ang gagamitin na diyan is yung aming uh, heavy duty. Okay? Especially for uh, aside from pa, sa mga malalaking tiles o mga large format tiles, ginagamit din yan sa mga tile over tile applications at saka sa mga ano, sa mga high use areas, for example, sa mga malls, mga suspended slabs. So doon yan ginagamit. Yan yung difference ng dalawa. So yung question about vertical applications, pwedeng-pwede. Yung yung tile adhesive talaga namin is formulated with uh, excellent slip resistance. Ano yan? C1T, yung premium plus namin, and C2T naman, yung aming heavy duty. Okay, so, <laughs> I see, parang yun lang yung nak nakuha kong mga, ano, mga question. Yeah, okay. Um, sige, wala na, no? Uh, actually, I think there are other questions na we can answer offline na lang. So, okay lang naman yun. Anyway. Ah, siguro, um, sagutin ko isa pa, I see. Okay, go um, ahead. Sabi niya, for, for gray color skin coat, ano applicable niya? What is the difference po sa white? Actually, wala pong difference ang uh, skin coat gray at skin coat white. Color lang talaga. So, depende na lang kung ano yung i, ipapatong mo na top coat. Uh, siguro kung dark color yung ano mo, yung uh, top coat na gagamitin mo, uh, I would suggest gumamit ka na ng gray. Pero kung mga light colors yung top coat mo, yung pintura mo, I would suggest gumamit ka ng white. Pero in terms of quality, performance, walang difference yung dalawa. Kulay uh, lang. Or siguro, parang words, ma may add ko lang din. For the gray color yes. ng skin coat natin, uh, usong gusto kasi ngayon na ano eh, yung industrial look na gusto ng mga end user natin eh. they can they can use the skin coat gray to have a so, ginagamit nila pang highlight yeah industrial look finish yep thank you thank you for the don't forget to like share and subscribe to pinoybuilders.ph to get the latest innovation on everything about construction.